Hello and welcome to Photography with Emery, and this is part two of the infrared photography episode. In this show I'll be demonstrating a couple of ways to post-process infrared photos, first in color and then in black and white. So before we begin I just want to emphasize that what I'm about to show you is how I would most commonly edit infrared photos. This tutorial is by no means exhaustive, so I suggest that you experiment with the settings and order of operations that you see me do, and try completely different things to get the results and look you want. On my blog I posted links to some tutorials on various sites, and I recommend that you do some googling on your own too. I'm also going to be using Adobe's Photoshop CS4, and my images are in RAW format as they provide some flexibility that JPEG can't, namely the ability to change the white balance of the photo. Okay, so I'm going to begin by showing you how you can post-process an infrared photograph into kind of a more of a false color version. And this is the original photo, just so you can kind of tell what it looks like. And so what I'm going to do is I'll grab the raw file. And I'm just going to reset it here. So this is what the original raw file looks like from the infrared photograph. A very deep red tone, of course. And one of the first things that most people do when editing this type of photo is to adjust the white balance to kind of neutralize the colors, to get rid of that red, basically. And as you can see, I'm hovering over the white balance tool. It gives me a little eyedropper. I can either do white balance on the clouds or sky. Uh, you can definitely do some experimentation there. A lot of people most commonly just choose like a leaf on a tree, and I just uh, click there on a fairly white leaf. And that, of course, starts to uh, neutralize the picture and gives you kind of a hint of what the uh, photograph is going to look like. Very commonly, you'll see uh, this type of photo. And I'm going to move over here to the histogram. You can kind of see what it looks like. And from here on, uh, it's fairly simple. I'm just adjusting the exposure of the picture. I'm increasing the uh, blacks in the picture as well. That gives me a little bit of a darker sky. Usually these types of photos are very punchy, uh, so I'm going to increase the contrast. I'll boost the clarity as well. As you can see, it's starting to give me a fairly, fairly good overall representation of the picture, but I mean, this is where it's a creative process, and you can kind of go through it yourself to, you know, kind of get to where you want to be. Now in this case, I'll boost the saturation as well. In a moment here, I'm just, uh, actually, I'm going to go ahead and open that image up. So, I mean, I just worked through the Photoshop's raw converters, all I really did here. And so that opens my uh, photo up. I'm going to go to the image menu, adjustments, and then the channel mixer. And I'm going to swap the red and blue channels, which is very common action done with this type of photography. And all you do is you select one of the channels you want to start with, like red. Put that to, put the red channel to zero and the blue channel to 100%. And then I'm going to select the blue channel. And I will do the same thing, 100% for the red, zero for the blue. So I kind of reversed, flipped, or swapped those two uh, channels. And you can still, you know, play with uh, various other settings here. But I'll keep this uh, brief since I don't have too much time in the video here. And you're starting to get that feel for the color version of these types of photographs. But of course, this is where you can take, for example, your levels. And you can just hit auto levels if you want, or if you're the type to use the eyedroppers, or you kind of like messing around with the sliders to get the right tonality of your picture. Feel free to do that. There's a before and after. That looks a bit kind of hazy. That looks a lot more punchy. I probably do a little bit more work on it and uh, I could increase the saturation, but I think that gives you a little bit of a head start. And of course on my blog, I've got some additional uh, materials that you can take a look at, some good websites with tutorials as well. So let's move on to the black and white version. And now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to open up that file. I'll just drag it into uh, Photoshop here and that'll open up the raw converter. And I still write, like to do the white balance. I'll just do it on a cloud, just for the heck of it. Something different. And I'm going to the fourth tab here. Hue, saturation, luminance. And then I'm going to check the little box that says convert to grayscale. 
And I'll go back to the first tab where I have uh, a few of these uh, settings here. And essentially, I'm just going to do more or less the same thing by making whatever adjustments I choose in order to basically bring the image to where I where I would like it to be. Now, of course, you could still open up a color version of this picture and then you could edit using uh, the tools that are in Photoshop. So I'll just open that up. And of course, um, if you go here, there's black and white, right? Right now, my image mode is in grayscale. If this was RGB, and I'll go over to the color version of this photo here, you could also use the black and white converter here as well. You get, of course, a different result. But as you can see, black and white is fairly simple. But um, uh, again, there are links on my website to other tutorials. And this could be also a fairly elaborate procedure. But nonetheless, hopefully that gives you a little bit of a head start to post-process your infrared photographs. Well, I hope you enjoyed this quick Photoshop tutorial about post-processing infrared photographs. There are many methods available, and of course, you might find using other applications like Aperture or Lightroom more to your liking. The key is, have fun and experiment lots to get that look you're going for. Keep in mind, too, that if you have a modified IR camera or are using different infrared filters, then your results will likely be different than what you saw here. And as usual, check out my blog as I'll be writing a supplemental post with links to websites on post-processing infrared images. And I also have my Facebook and Twitter sites listed there too. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe so you can stay up to date with my new videos. And I certainly hope to see you next time. Take care.